Chef Tanya Holland has a degree in Russian language and literature, but her interest in cooking began at a young age when her parents organized a cooking and dining club with other couples. After college, she dove into the restaurant business. After earning a grand diploma in France and training with some top-ranked chefs, she returned to the U.S. and now has her own restaurant, Brown Sugar Kitchen, in West Oakland, California, along with numerous awards and honors for her updated, soulful cooking style. We are delighted to welcome Chef Tanya Holland to the dish. Good morning. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. We're very happy you brought pulled pork. It I looks did. awesome. It's like falling out the best way. Tell us what's on the table. All right. Well, we're starting with the cornbread. I call it a confetti cornbread. It has pieces of roasted red and green bell peppers, uh, mac and cheese with some breadcrumbs on top of it. And this is the pulled pork sandwich, as you recognize, mm. with my spicy coleslaw and our baked yam wedges. Wow. And last but not least, peach cobbler. No, not last but not least. <laughs> Tell us about oh, the beverage. Oh, yes, and then the drink. Yeah, we can't forget our drink. So this is called the B-side. The B-side. Like the B-side of a record. Oh. I had a barbecue spot for a few years called the B-side. It was the, the B-side of Brown Sugar Kitchen. Juanita was and complaining she thought the portions were too small. And small. also, I'll tell you what, also there could be, be some for, more in there. <laughs> B for bourbon, the, uh, the main ingredient in, in there. So, so tell us a little bit about your background, because we mentioned the Russian language and the literature. I know. People always, you Are know, those stop. useful? <laughs> <laughs> well, finally, last year, I was able to call my dad. I said, the degree finally paid off. Um, I w received a message from the State Department asking me to go to Kazakhstan mm -hmm. to be a culinary diplomat. So and I, you could actually speak the language. I could speak uh, a little. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I went there for 10 days. It uh, was kind of to commemorate the 105th, 150th anniversary of the emancipation of slaves. The uh, Foreign Service officer thought it would be a good time for the Kazakhs to learn about African American cuisine. And yeah. he found me, and I went. And what so, a, yeah. What a great trip. Yeah, I love the awesome. story about your parents' cooking club. I know. I mean, which went as, on for about 20 years. Yeah, as I got older, I just appreciated so much more because they were in their late 20s when they started it. So tell me, what, what exactly would happen at so, these meetings? So um, every month, yeah. there, um, one of the couples would host the, uh, the event, and mm -hmm. the host couple would select the theme of the menu, whether it was Hawaiian or, you know, they did a Jewish Seder one month, they did Pennsylvania Dutch, they did, you know, the usual suspects, Mexican, And these Italian, were elaborate sit-down meals for them? Yeah, they were five to six courses, and every couple would be assigned a course. So, wow. you know, again, so I'm awesome. learning about sort of yeah. like sophisticated dining at, at that age and all those, exposed to all those cuisines, and all my friends were eating TV dinners and, mm -hmm. you know, macaroni and cheese out of the box and all this, and... Um, I realized when I got to college how spoiled I was, and you then started, I started, started sharing your own, it. Right? Yeah, yeah. Then I said, "Well, let me cook for you guys," and I got a couple of cookbooks, and you know, just kind of messed around, and um, I enjoyed providing that experience for people. So I still wasn't committed to the the restaurant business yet. I started waiting tables, but it wasn't what I thought I was going to do, but it just sort of made sense. Well, how did you end up picking soul food? Because you're from Rochester, New York. I know, but so my parents are from the South. They are, okay. Yeah, so my mom's from Louisiana, and my dad's from Virginia, so I would spend a lot of summers with my grandparents in those places, but also my parents, besides the gourmet club, they also cooked a lot of soul food at home and when they had friends over. I mean, you know, feeding people was part of their entertaining. You mm -hmm. know, that's what they did. And so it just kind of became ingrained in me. And I tell people, like, more than cooking, like, I just love feeding people. Like, even if I'm, like, got cheese and yeah. crackers mm -hmm. or a bag of chips. I have a feeling that something. your parents' story will ignite a lot of people to think about doing that. Also, I it's so. such a great idea. It's a great way to socialize, yes. you know, and to bring people together of different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. I really, you know, it's Well, as I hand this dish yes. to you to get your signature oh. on it, oh, I want to ask you if you could have this meal with any person, past or present, who would that person be. Oh my goodness, that is just um, me think. I think I'd love to share with Julia Child. You know Ooh. why not? She's an inspiration of uh, for me for many years, yeah. and um, I did have a chance to meet her. But it'd be really great to sit down and have her taste this food and see some of my French influence. In. It's absolutely yeah. delicious. Thank Chef you. Tanya Holland, thank you so much. Thank you. And for more on Tanya Holland and the dish, please head to our website at cbsthismorning.com.